Today we'll recreate this, starting from this, modeling each of the elements in 3D. Then using the sketch render system, we'll finish up with an elevation like this. You can download all these files on the archive Patreon. So let's get started. The shape of the walls dictate the roof to a large degree. Put in some posts at the front here. Let's see how we are looking. Already we're starting to create some shape. Let's box in this front area. I'll center this wall over this wall. I'll create a duplicate of this wall just here at a 45 degree angle to the end and mirror it back across to the side just here as well. I'll bring this whole turret out to the face just to here. Proportionally, it's too wide. So what I'm going to do, I'll bring it all the way to the edge here. Now the width of this is 3.5 meters. So if we want this to be half the size of this, it's going to be 1750. Take this and resize it to 1750 and go, okay. Take the center point, I'll recenter it back to the middle, line it up with there. I'll hold in control, snip out this wall just here. I'll select this lab, grabbing the edge, I'm going to go to the pet palette until we go to add polygon. Holding in space bar, I'm going to add to this lab. That way it's all one slab. Let's check out our 3D. It's coming together quite nicely. All right, let's go to our roof tool, making sure multiplane is selected. Let's go from our bottom left up to our top right hand side. Let's select the roof on this edge just here and we'll create a new node just in line with this wall here. And we'll pull this edge out just here, selecting the offset edge just to there. Now we want this one to be a gable. So let's bring this one out in line with here and let's reduce the eave to say 300. Keep custom and go okay. I'll cut the roof and troll up to go up to my roof story and paste that one in. We'll go back down. Next up, let's go to our roof again. This time single plane. We'll go ahead and create a pitching point face towards the building. Go bottom left up to top right, creating our roof. We'll shrink this one in just until it's at that node there. From here, we'll use the cut tool. Slice this one at 67.5 on both sides. Five, delete. I'll select this one, control M to mirror. I'll mirror this roof while duplicating it. I'll crop off this part of the roof just there. I'll select this one and duplicate it back over to this side of the roof just here. I'll adjust this roof back to this cut just here. Let's see how we're looking in 3D. All right, not too bad. But next up, let's get that pitch up to 45 degrees. We'll go keep custom. But in our reference image, the two ridges line up just along here. The way that we'll remedy this, we'll take the width of this room, bring it over to here, and we'll grab our pitching point just from here. As I'm bringing this one back, we'll see that the ridge is coming back as well. So let's line it up and those should perfectly line up. Let's go back into our 3D. Hey, okay, there we are, perfect. So this back portion gets coverage. We could create a node and push back a hip roof here. We'll grab this roof and I'll bring this one out. So it's in line with that back wall just there. Excellent, we've got the roof covering the back end, but if we go to the elevation, it's not affecting the front facade. Let's take this roof, bump up the pitch to say 45 as well. I think our roof pitch might actually be say 60 degrees. Let's bump that one up. We'll go keep as custom and go okay. That's looking a bit more accurate. Now let's fill in this void just here, which means we're going to need to drag this wall all the way up to the top. We cut it earlier, but let's go ahead and just drag this one back on over. We'll select this wall, delete it. And instead of cutting it, we'll go to the door tool. We'll select an empty door opening and we'll go rectangular door and we'll go okay. So if we punch one in here and bring it out to that width just to there and then go back to our elevation. Excellent. So it's not affecting that front facing facade there now. Let's go to our 3D. We'll take our wall, right click, we'll go connect, solid element operation. We'll have this as our target, the roof as our operator and we'll go subtraction with output extrusion which is going to cut that wall to the roof. Let's exit out of that one and go back to our elevation, starting to take shape. Holding in eyedropper, let's select our roof again to select the tool, getting escape ones to exit out of the door tool. Let's create a pitching point just along this bottom edge of the deck here. We'll send the pitching point back and we'll create our roof just here. Let's go back to our elevation. We'll lower the roof pitch down to say 10 degrees. I'll take this chance to select all the roofs. I'll change this structure back to basic. I'll apply the building materials. Ah, oh, much better. Now I'll bring the bottom of this roof down to the deck and bring it up so we've got a minimum head height of 2.2 meters up to there. I want this to meet up with this roof just here. So let's go back into our floor plan. We'll select the roof that we just created and we'll pull this one back just so it's in line with the face of this roof just here. Go to our elevation. We'll select our roof and we'll bring this one so it's up in line with this roof. Change our roof thickness to 250. Let's go ahead and drag this roof all the way out to there. Let's take our posts here and bring these ones on down. Let's bring this roof down as well, say 500 mil. We'll select these walls just here, do a solid element operation. Having these as our target. Again, the roof as our operator. We'll go subtraction with upward extrusion and execute back to our elevation. This roof here is also a gable. So let's go ahead and go back to the floor plan. So we'll bring this one back just in line. We'll take this ridge just here and we'll push it out just till it's a gable. We'll bring this roof eave just in. Let's check out our 2D. There we go. So for the time being, we could create a flat roof just out through the back. Line it up with this wall just here. Bring that in line with the face just there. 
And that'd be a lower ceiling room just in through that back area. We can barely see it, but let's select our roof, go connect, solid element operation. We'll have this one as our operator. These walls at the rear, just as a target, because it's traction with, our, with upward extrusion and go execute. Let's create a little dormer roof just here. So again, I'll select the roof with the eyedropper and I'll create a multiplane roof just in through here. Create quite a small one. Let's go 1500 by say 3000. Going to be adjusting this quite a bit. So we'll take this roof, bring it out just until it's in line with that pitching point. Same for this one just here. So this way we can really quickly form up a gable roof. Bring this one up to the ridge and then bring it down say 350 mil. Let's go into our vector engine. Yeah, that's looking good. So to finish this off, let's take a wall and we'll go ahead and draw this in. Take this one we just created, mirror it back across. We'll grab both those walls, we'll go cut and we'll bring it up to the roof. We'll paste this one in, click out and we're looking to close in the face of this one. So let's draw that in and mirror that back around. Select all three walls and we'll go connect. Let's check out our ISO. Hey, there we go. Let's select our walls and you guessed it, right click. Those will be our target. The dormer will be our operator and you guessed it, subtraction with upward extrusion. The benefit of this method is that we can move the roof and the wall cut will adjust accordingly. Let's go undo and check out our elevation. Now it's a small detail, but let's go into these roofs. We'll go to custom angle and set this one to 60. Now these walls here look more like a parapet than anything. So we'll right click and go ahead and clear all connections. So let's actually select these roofs. We'll go solid element operation. We'll make these the target. This time the walls will be the operator and we'll just go subtraction. Now in reality, this wouldn't be particularly great for the actual drainage itself. And we would have to figure out a way to remedy potential blockages that we'd be facing. Let's go back to our elevation. Now these are stepped in. So what we can do, we can select our door that we created a little bit earlier. We'll put this onto our walls just out the front. Let's make it 500 wide and we'll center it. Let's go a bit shorter, 400, center it, and do the same for our other walls. Now in our elevation, let's select our openings and bring them all the way up and about 400 short, so that's gonna be 2,600, and we'll go okay. Punch that up just a little bit further, say another 200 mil, and that's given us a turret kind of aesthetic. All right, we've got our roofs and walls checked off. Next up, doors and windows. So door tool, go into our door, we'll go into hinge door. Let's go an arch door with a HV grid. Just add a little extra flare, we'll go okay, and let's add this one in. We'll set the reveal at 85 and let's center it in our wall. Let's look at our elevation. This line here is distracting. So let's select our door, go to opening lines and angle. We'll select override and turn the line off and go, okay, there we are, much cleaner. So next up, windows. Go to basic windows and we'll go to a double sash and go, okay. Center this one in the wall just here and face it out towards the street and insert it, say 85 mil from the face. Let's go to our elevation. Let's set this so it's header to wall base and that's going to be 2100 and go okay. Width wise we're a bit wide so let's bring this one in say to 1200. Let's say a thousand and again we'll go into our settings. We'll go back to opening lines, override and turn off the opening line and go okay. It's going to give us a clearer elevation and 3D view. Let's select all of our rooms and go to our setting and we'll just go to home store only and go okay. So it's a bit easier on the eyes as we're making these adjustments now that we've finished up with the roof. We'll go to our window. We'll inject the parameters into the window just here and we'll go okay. So we don't have to redo all those settings. And let's go ahead and place this one into our wall just at the front of the structure. Select this one with the eyedropper, place it into the center just here. And lastly, this one just here. Go to our elevation. Hey, let's select all three of these again and bump those up to say 500 and shorten them up to say 1200. We've got two windows left to go, this one and this one just here. Let's just select our windows and insert these as well. So much better. Back to our ground floor. Let's select a window and just center it over this wall here. We'll place this one in just here. Go into our window. We'll open up its setting and go into Gothic arch top window opening and we'll go okay. Just before we go into our elevation, we'll want to bring this one way up. Let's say 3,500 and go okay. Go into elevation. You can just see the tip of it here. We can see the tip of it just here. So let's bring that one up say 1500 and go okay and we'll reduce the width massively let's go to say 600 maybe even 450. go ahead and reduce the height as well down to say 1200 and bring it up another 500. we'll bring that base down so it's about 1500. i'll give this one a frame and we'll go negative reveal and we'll go okay just adding some depth to that window there let's check out our 3d but we want to add some glazing in behind it we'll go to a ground floor to create glazing let's create another wall a window and we'll chuck it inside of here centered. We'll cut this one and bring it up to our roof and paste this one in. For the reveal, I'll go zero. So from here, we can go 1500 for the height and 800 for the width. We'll stretch it up a little bit further. There we are. Now we've got that glazed. And when we go to the 3D, we'll have it glazed for this area too. We'll take our wall, solid element operation, go to the roof, subtraction, upward extrusion, execute. Let's go ahead and grab this wall just here. 
We'll center it with our Dorma just over here. Go ahead and select this window just here. We'll go back up to our floor plan and we'll change the head to wall base, change the head height to 1500 so it doesn't disappear when we place it inside the wall. We'll go centered and pull this out towards the face. We'll go to our elevation, pull this one up just to here. Let's shorten this one up just a little bit. We'll line it up so it matches up with this one just here. Just a little bit shorter. Take our walls and we'll do a solid element operation on this wall just here. Go execute. And that's our windows done. Next up is the fun bit. Let's go to our objects and you'll find this one just here. We'll go OK. Go to our ground floor. We'll rotate it just so it matches up. And I'll flip around to each of the different edges of our structure. Mirror this one across. Bring one to here as well. And let's check out our elevation. Hey, look at that. Ah, that looks good. That looks very, very cool. Next up, chimney. Let's select our slab. It's going to be roughly here. Let's make it 600 by 600. And we'll make it, say, 6,000, 6,000 on the height. So when we go to our elevation, it'll show where it's popping out. Okay, so that's way too far back into the roof. So we need to pull it forward. So let's bring that to the corner of our building just here and see where that shows up. Hey, that's much better. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. But it's going to be smaller. So let's resize, Control-K and go OK to do it graphically. Bring this one to say 450. Go to elevation, even better. We'll change our material. We'll bring this one's height down roughly in line with just here. Take the slab, we'll offset all edges while creating a duplicate in say about 80 mil. This one will make 6,000 again and 6,000. That way it'll pop up out through the elevation. So let's bring that one all the way up to the top. I'll grab this bottom one, just drag it out. Grab the bottom part, doing some rough modeling with the slabs here. Make this so it's about 50 mil. Bring this one down 200. Bring that one through to the top. Let's go 6,800. Go to our isometric. Hey. Let's clean up some of the lines. Solid element operation. Make this the target, this the operator, and subtraction. That way we've got a clear valley line just through there. Let's offset our chimney details that we're doing. Say about 25 mil. Go back in by 25 mil. And go and duplicate the one that we've already done. One of the most important steps. Let's go ahead and save. Create the top of the chimney. Let's create a little arc. And we'll create a slab inside of the arc. We'll bump this one up to 7,000 so it's on top. Let's bring that back down to there. Now what we're going to do, bring this part of the chimney back down to the top of the ridge. We'll bring this part down to the top. Bring this one up, say 350 mil. We'll go into our 3D. And we'll convert this one into a morph. We'll go OK. The morph selected and bring that in, say 50 mil. And we'll go OK. And I'll create a cone at the top of the chimney. Next up, let's draw in some brackets. Just down in this white space just here, let's go 650, bring them in, say 100, and we'll bring that back up to the top. We'll mirror this one across, and then we'll bring it up, say 150, and go to 45, match up to there. Then we'll arc this point just here, say 600, and let's go ahead and crop off those lines. Grab the fill tool, we'll fill this one in, we'll set this one to white so it stands out. And we'll bring this up and see how we're looking. Not too bad, but let's say bring it into 550. There we are. It's a bit more proportional. Next up, we'll go to the morph tool and we'll hover over the top of the bracket that we just created. Go into our 3D and the morph will now show up in our 3D. Go to 25, just to insert that. Go back into our elevation. We'll select a fill. We'll delete that one. We'll take the morph and just mirror that across, creating a duplicate. Changing lighting in three, two, one. All right, so we'll want to change the lighting in the elevation settings. We're going to go to sun azimuth and we'll change this one to five degrees and we'll go, okay. That's going to cast the shadows back so it's not creating such a distraction on the actual facade itself. I'll create a duplicate of this 3D, call it front facing and we'll go, okay. In 3D view options, I'll go to projection settings. I'm going to change this so that it is front facing and I'm gonna to wanna to change the sun so it's behind the camera. From here, I'll go, okay. Double click to recenter and zoom this back and adjust the zoom accordingly. I'll redefine with current window settings so it locks this into place. Now this looks like an elevation. If I hold in shift and pan around, I can see it's actually the 3D. Now with this front 3D, if I go to document, creative imaging, and go photo render settings, I'll go to my own custom settings that I've set up in the sketch render system. If you pause, take a screenshot and match up your settings to mine, you can get a similar effect. Now, if we go to size, I'll keep the frame the same as it is, but I'm going to change the resolution to 250 and we'll hit render. Hey, there we go. We zoom in, we've now got a sketched render of that front facade. Now, if I go back to the 3D view, and we go to view, 3D view options, and go back to that projection setting. If we go back to ISO, we'll change the camera angle so it's front facing, just like this, at 45, and then go OK. Double click middle mouse button. It's actually going to have a top-down 
type of perspective on the 3D. So I'm going to duplicate my view and redefine with current window settings. So it locks that one in. I'll go back to my custom setting. We'll change this one to 250. We'll change the palette size. So it's at least say 250 by well, say 250 and we'll go render. And like that, we can create multiple sketches in just a click of a button from a bunch of different angles. Don't forget, you can download all these files over on the Archive Patreon. If you liked this recreation, you'll love this video just over here.